Well, hey gang, how are you doing? Jonathan here for Tailhunter Sport Fishing, and it's time once again for the Mexican Minute La Paz Video Fishing Report, covering all of the fishing action for our Tailhunter Sport Fishing fleet for the dates of the 11th through the 18th of April, 2022. Wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for checking in. Thanks for spending time with us, and uh, please do us a favor. If you like what we're, we've been doing, uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Really appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about what happened this past week. To be perfectly honest with you, I got to tell you, there's not much to tell you uh, other than I hope you had a really great Easter and Easter week, had a good time with family and friends and everything, because as far as fishing was concerned, not really much going on. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, a lot of folks that are coming into town, they're not there for fishing. They're there because of spring break. They're there because it's Easter. They're there visiting friends and family. A lot of the Mexicans from other areas do come into town to visit with relatives. Likewise, a lot of the folks from Mexico also travel internationally as well as domestically. So a lot of traveling going on. The airports were packed. They were full. I heard some people tell me that their flights took two hours from the U.S., but it took like two and a half hours just to get their luggage and to get out through customs and get outside so they can travel to wherever they were going. Town is packed. The Easter week, by all uh, statistics, is the busiest travel week of the entire year in Mexico bigger than Thanksgiving, which is an American holiday anyway. It's bigger than Christmas because so many people are traveling. A lot of those beaches that you see in all of the photos in La Paz that are normally empty, don't have anybody on them, during Easter week, you know, nobody works. A lot of folks, all the schools are closed, all the offices are closed, a lot of the government area uh, offices are closed as well. Everybody's on the beach. So uh, unlike the U.S. where there's, you know, designated camping spaces, number 19, number 24, and you got your little uh, camp table and your little fire pit and everything like that. There's nothing like that in Mexico for the most part. So everyone sets up wherever they want to and wherever there's a space. The beaches are public in Mexico, so no one can stop anyone from headed out there. So some of these beaches that are normally pretty empty during uh, Easter week, you have to literally, it looks like Woodstock. You've got to tiptoe between tents, between barbecues, boom boxes, all the toys and everything like that. So it's been a really, really busy week, which will continue after that as spring break continues. And again, as I said, a lot of folks traveling in and out of Mexico. Anyway, as far as fishing, like I mentioned, not many folks fishing. And on top of that, even though we did have some really nice temperatures up in the high 80s during the daytime, tickling the 90s, and then nighttime temperatures, a pretty comfortable high 60s, mostly sunny, some clouds coming in, those winds did come back. Now, I mentioned in a previous or, or my last week's fishing report that you know I don't have a crystal ball it seemed like the winds were getting better a little better every week but honestly like I said no crystal ball and the winds did come back now they didn't always come back during the daytime when folks were fishing although there were some blustery days that made it really tough to fish made it tough to be out there but you know even when it's come during the daytime during the afternoons, this is still a little bit off season, during the afternoons those winds come back up and they're blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour out of the north generally. And that still turns over the water. It makes it, uh, the turbidity increases, the cloudiness increases. It affects where and how we are able to catch the bait. So even though sometimes if the wind isn't blowing during the daytime fishing hours, it can still affect the daytime fishing because the winds are blowing at night and some of my friends that went over to the islands this past week were telling me that in the evenings and the late afternoons the winds were howling so that was a big effect on top of it we had a full moon this week now normally folks ask me you know what do i think about fishing during a full moon and i usually say you know it really doesn't make that much of an have that much of an effect on things but this past week you got two big variables a full moon which caused great uh, currents and tide changes and then you add in the wind to that and that's two really big hurdles to jump over as far as fishing is concerned so fishing was really kind of slow this week really picky folks had to work really hard a couple other things the yellowtail that have been biting so nicely i think we're seeing the end of the yellowtail season waters are starting to get warmer we're seeing some marlin we're starting to see more dorado we're starting to see the warm water species that usually come in when the waters get warmer, right? The yellowtail are a cooler water fish. So as the waters get warmer, the yellowtail are moving out. The counts on the yellowtail are definitely diminishing. 
We didn't see much yellowtail this week. Most of the fishing, again, because of the winds and because of full moon, was inshore fish. Some pargo, some cabrilla, nothing real spectacular. Sierra, a lot of cold water fish, uh, lots of bonita. So there was some action, but nothing really in terms of trophy size sport fish. Uh, not much anyway. We did see some marlin, got a couple dorado. Yellowtail, like I say, are diminishing. So I, I think our yellowtail season, amberjack season, is probably on the way out. We did get some rooster fish this week, so that's a good sign. We got some sizable 30, 40 pound rooster fish, and this is about the season when they're going to start moving in, so that's a good sign. These fish are right up along the shorelines, along the rocky areas, don't have to go out very far. And, you know, as you've heard in the past, La Paz is the rooster fish capital of the world. So we're hoping, got our fingers crossed, that the rooster fish are going to start moving in some of those big boys, some of those 50, 60, 100 pounders within the next few weeks, next few months. Anyway, that's going to be a quick wrap up on what's going on in La Paz. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for checking in. I'm Jonathan for the Mexican Minute. You take care. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, have yourself a good week. We'll catch you down the line.